Okay, so who uses open form? So this is an important question you need to ask because if you're spending time learning the software, then it makes sense to understand who is using it. Pretty much all the automotive companies. And I'm just giving you three examples here. There are a lot more companies that use open form. Power generation companies, GE, Honeywell, Pratt & Whitney. You, have, you still have your um, in, uh, in energy companies also like uh, BP, um, Halliburton, um, Exxon, Schlumberger, all of them use open form when it comes to CFD analysis. Cloud-based CFD providers, SimScale, you know, that is a name that you might have heard. They use open form in the back, open form in the back end. Elix, this is another uh, major uh, open source provider. They use uh, open form as their primary solver. Now the interesting thing is research labs. Now I'm not sure how many of you want to do your masters in the US. Maybe I can take a hit count. Is anyone interested in doing their masters in the US or UK? or masters in US or Europe, pretty much every university in the world uses it. At least one person in that in a particular lab is working on open form. Basics of CFD. I feel like I should cover this because most of you are still in an undergrad, undergraduate, and most of you are still in your UG degree. So CFD basically refers to simulating flow using a computer, right? You're solving the fundamental flow equations using a computer. There are four steps to it. There's a pre-processing step, there is a meshing step, there's a solving step and a post-processing step. Basically, pre-processing is, you can kind of think of think of it as preparing your geometry, preparing your entire computational model. So this includes starting with your CAD model. So which could be a valve, which could be an engine, which could be an airplane, doesn't matter. And then usually when you're dealing with industry quality geometry, there is something called a CAD model preparation, meaning the model is so complex that it contains so many parts that you need to basically simplify it or categorize it in such a way that you can take data out from it. Okay, so this is called as model preparation. Now some other softwares, in fact, most of the softwares need a step called as a CAD cleanup, meaning when you're making a large CAD model, right? So typically what, if you're a manufacturing company, then you have the entire 3D model, all right? Now, one thing you need to remember is when you're running flow analysis, you don't need the entire 3D model right? Because your fluid is not going to be interacting with the nuts and bolts that are outside a valve, for example, right? So you have to give something called as the wet volume, W-E-T, wet volume. What does that mean? That refers to the volume of, that refers to the volume where fluid is actually flowing. So you need to extract that. This process is called as fluid volume extraction, right? And in this process, you will also see that if the CAD model has been made slightly less accurately, then you will have surface intersections, you will have holes in the model, which are called as open edges. If the model is made like a long time back, then due to the, when you convert it from one, one format to another format, you can have resolution loss or losses in curvature, which would result in very bad problems like non-manifold problems, which we don't have to go into. But the, problem, the, the thing that I'm trying to say is, when you, have a, when you have a complex CAD model, it might be broken and you need to fix it. That would be, a, that would be included in the pre-processing step. And there are several techniques to do it. Okay. So then comes the process of meshing. What does mesh generation mean and why do you need it? So the answer that I, that I was expecting is discretization basically helps you take a continuous form equation. So if you take the equations that govern fluid flow, they are partial differential equations, correct? They are PDEs and that can be solved in pretty much any point. So it is what you call as, you will have a solution that exists in the continuous domain, right? It is a continuous equation. These partial differential equations assume that everything is continuous, but these partial differential equations cannot be solved using your computer because of their complexity. <clears throat> okay. Since these equations are so complex, you need to convert it into a form so that you can solve it in a computer. This conversion process is actually an approximate process. Okay. This approximate process is what you call as discretization. At the end of the day, with discretization, you're converting partial differential equations into, the, into an algebraic equation, which can be solved at the end of the day by solving a matrix. And in order to do that, you have to identify points. So for example, let us say you have a box like this and say that there is a fan. Uh, let me try to draw a fan as good as possible. So let us say that this is a fan. So 
at any point at any x y z doesn't matter i always have a velocity right because when you derive the navier stokes equations you assume that your your velocity components your fluid properties are all continuous functions meaning it the data for a density the data for velocity exists in any point now when you're creating a mesh you kind of saying that okay see i'm assuming i'm i'm breaking my entire computational space into small small blocks so for example here this is 1 2 3 4 5 so this is 10 15 and 20 right so i have 20 blocks in this case in each of those blocks i'm saying that i will have a velocity i will have a velocity i will have pressure and i'll have temperature i don't have the same value exists in this entire cell right so there is no difference spatially which is not which is not true in in case of real world but you you do this approximation this is called as discretization and that is basically a meshing process now for discretization there are several methods you can derive several methods which is what you call as finite element finite volume and finite difference you might have or might have not studied about this but these are the three methods that are available Thank you.